Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Kogiwals Nation. My name is Secret Agent Nukes No Kogiwals. I'm the founder and the director of the Kogiwals Industry Spy Network and the Kogiwals Nation. In a previous video showcasing how one could build, or really just grab, i3WM with Bumblebee status, it's this video right here if you're unaware. Since then, I have decided to instead use Polybar as my status bar of choice. Now, I've already went ahead and added status for Polybar as well. Here's the wiki for Polybar. But if we go into codeberg.org forward slash nikdoig forward slash, I believe it is i3-configs, spelled like that. If we go inside of this Codeberg instance, you'll find that I went ahead and added a Polybar uh, theme, and it is called Noir based upon this Noir over here. I've also added extra instructions for those that wanted to use Polybar, but most likely on abusing it and Bumblebee doing some testing and seeing how that's going to work. But I will continue to update this specific Git repository, and I believe the mirror should also be inside of GitHub as well, if ever you wanted to use that. But if my GitHub isn't updated, go ahead and check Codeberg. It'll be the same thing. But that being said, for now, let's go ahead and take a look at how one can install Polybar. Now, I built it from source, so I'm going to be doing it that way. For those of you that are using Ubuntu 2404, since I am doing an Ubuntu-based tutorial, you don't need to do this because it's already in your repositories. But for me, since I'm on Ubuntu 2204, I kind of have to. So let's go ahead to the web and then I'll get to the code. Right? I will go ahead and track down how to even install this thing. So to build this from source, there's one command that you have to use. These are the dependencies that are paste friendly for apt. It'll be sudo apt and then all of this. All of that has to be installed. This is for if you're using uh, Ubuntu 2204. But if you're on, again, Ubuntu 2404 or earlier than that, but later than 2204, somewhere around there, you should be fine. We've got some optional dependencies as well, which I do have some of these, though I can actually do this real quick. I'll place in my password, and all of that's already installed. Next, you need to get the source. Now, in my case, I went ahead and did this thing here, but some people would recommend downloading the release archive and then doing tar xvzf. But I assume you're going to want to do it like this. So grab this command, clone it with all of the submodules, then you go into polybar. Then afterwards, you can go ahead and do make deer into build cd into it, cmake with a double dot, which basically means the source code is in there and then you make it. I also did sudo make install as well, and I built it with GCC. If GCC doesn't work, you can always make clang with clang++, since this is in C++. These are all of the CMake options, if you are into that, but for beginners, I don't think this is going to be necessary. Now, once Polybar is installed, we are going to have to go ahead and get into polybar slash doc, grab the config.ini, and we need to go ahead into our home folder, track down dot config. And if we hadn't made it yet, we need to make a polybar uh, configuration folder inside of dot config. Get in there. This is where you will grab your config.ini example inside of the polybar repository and bring it over to here. Just copy the config.ini. You will also need to make a start.sh. Thankfully, 
the people behind Polybar already thought of that, and they made this example executable file for the startup logic. Now, you probably do not want two bars, so instead you'll just do a singular polybar. Go ahead and get rid of that line. For my case, I used NeoVim to do it with NVChad, since I'm using NeoVim 0.9.4. But you can also use any other text editor like Nano, Micro, or even a GUI editor. But I will use NeoVim. So for that, we'll do into.config. The tilde is your home directory alias. We'll do start after polybar. What am I even thinking? I'm not even thinking straight right now. And then we'll do start.sh. Here's my start.sh. And I will move this over for a second. Because I'm going to open up another terminal. And I do have the DT color scripts. Go ahead and hit space on that. All right, so after some monkeying around, I think this should be fine for the most part. There we go. Now I will invim into home directory, which is the tilde dot config. Then polybar. And then config dot ini. I'll go inside of my config. And then you'll see this section here, bar slash doig. Whatever you name the bar, you have to name the bar the same thing inside of start.sh. So polybar knows exactly what bar you are talking about. Now, in my case, I actually have quite a bit inside of this bar. I even have the tray over here, which is an applet tray, right? Now you can take a look at the documentation to learn how all these things work. Some of these I have left default. Some of them I went ahead and removed. Now the colors, I went ahead and did the colors. And this is my noir color scheme. The same one, by the way, that I went ahead and used uh, in the code bear repository that you may have seen earlier. So there is that as well. We do not need the start of this H because basically you just have to type in your bar. If you just do bar slash bar, just type in bar. In my case, I did bar slash doig, and then I just typed in doig inside of this little section there. That is how the uh, polybar is up there as per the usual. I will go ahead and bring, bring this out a little bit so you can see a little better. And I think while I'm at it, I'll go ahead and do that for my mobile viewers. First things first, let's go to the colors. The colors are basically the colors you'll be using for the bar. So for example, I could do a background. I could do a better background, but I think what I'm going to go ahead and do is use something called daily color. And then say I want a lighter black. I want something lighter than black. So I could go ahead and do a six, a six, a six. This does in fact use hexadecimal code. So I can go ahead and do that for the foreground. I'll just do straight up black. If I write it, reset I three, some things are going to be different. Now it's no longer like that. For example, the background alt. Well, for the background alt, I could do something a little lighter than black, but not straight black for that. I'll go ahead and do 3B, 3B, 3B. There we go. There's that. That's fine. If I did primary, the primary color, uh, I'm going to do a little more black. So I'll do 26, 26, 26. Now the text is going to be somewhat black, right? The secondary color, I could actually do straight up black or almost straight up black. 0D, 0D, 0D. I don't know why I'm doing R like that. Anyway, if we go ahead and do that, you'll see that I've done a couple of different things. Alert is actually in red. And if I disable it, that's fine. But I'm actually going to go back into my regular colors. So background, uh, black, background, alt. I'll keep that actually to 3B, 
No, let's do zero D. Zero D three times. Foreground. I could probably do a lighter, lighter deal. So 45. Primary. For the primary, let's do that one. Secondary. Let's do a little darker for F. And then the alert should be fine. Though, realistically, if I actually wanted to do some sort of red, right? If I wanted to do some sort of red here, I'll go ahead. Oop, that's not what I wanted. I guess I'll do something like that. It'll be part of it. If I did alert, and then disabled, I'll probably do... I guess I'll go ahead and do... Uh, six, three. I guess I'll do that one. That should be fine. But I did go ahead and actually do foreground. So if I did this, I could go ahead and make that white. The primary, I think, if I'm not mistaken... Oh wait, the background is zero. The background alt. I need a little lighter than that. I need a little lighter than that. 8C. That'll work. That'll work. Yeah, and that alert thing for a... I could probably go ahead and do this. I don't think that would be that bad. But maybe I'll go a little darker. Maybe don't do much saturation. I don't want too much saturation. So maybe 4F quadruple 4. There we go. That shouldn't be so bad. Background Alt. I think that's that little bar thing. I will go ahead and actually make that almost an off-white. I'll just make it kind of an off-white maybe. So A three one nine one. So A three nine one nine one. Why am I doing that? I am not typing very well, as you can see. But I can go ahead and do something like that. The background alt is that. Um, I think it was the secondary. Was it the secondary? I guess I can try this. A Three nine one nine one. That was it, wasn't it? Nah, somewhat. That's the alert. The primary. I guess I could probably do BA. So do R. That'll work. That'll work. It's just a lot of trial and error with what you're trying to do. But yeah, I think I'll use this one, bring it over to my uh, gate repository. So that one, I think it should be updated. So I should be fine with that. Let's get that out of here. Go into tweaks, get that out of here. And I think I can go ahead and just be right quick. I will reset i3. And that's pretty much it from here. You can take a look at the documentation into i3. And you'll be able to see exactly how good it is. Because it is pretty decent. You'll be able to know exactly how it works. Once it's compiled, this is probably all you need. And then of course, if you want to check out my i3 configs, go ahead and go to my Codeberg repository. So you'll be able to see exactly what I did with that. And some other things. That being said, I am out of time for today's video. Thank you. And good night.